The influence of First Enoch on the New Testament Part 5, we have seen that with Justin Martyr, Athenagoras, and Tertullian the Book of Enoch obtained recognition, with the last named as inspired. Clement of Alexandria and the author of the Gnostic, 3rd century also quote from it, although what they quote is not now found in any existing text. The pseudo-Clementine homilies and recognitions contain, the one a lengthy, the other a shorter passage, each a summary apparently of many or several in Enoch, but without referring to that patriarch as their source. Irenaeus has several passages which contain statements apparently from Enoch, but equally without acknowledgement. The testimony of Origen is decisive as to the currency of the book among Christians, and in his earlier writings he speaks of it as scripture, as also does the Alexandrian, author of the Epistle of Barnabas, but his maturer judgment is to the effect that the churches did not accept it as inspired. He speaks of the books of Enoch, 83t3xa, as though more than one were known. The bent of Origen studies toward perfecting the canonical books of scripture gives to this gradual progress of his judgment a peculiar weight. It suggests that, while the church's canon itself fluctuated, the estimate of Enoch similarly fluctuated, and that, as that canon became ascertained and definite, the rejection of Enoch was similarly pronounced. Only in the remote Abyssinian church do we find that it ever established its claim to the canon, and stands in the Ethiopic Bible among the Hagiographa, next to Job. Traces of the book's currency occur in the Acts of Perpetua, and in Minucius Felix, the former certainly and the latter probably African. Indeed, there is much reason to suspect that the former acts were placed in their present setting by Tertullian himself, who, as we have seen, was an eager champion for the inspiration of Enoch. Julius Africanus and some minor African church writers attest Enoch as known, and its statements accepted as historical. Cyprian, a greater name, quotes the statement about the apostate angels having taught women the use of cosmetics and personal adornments, as a fact on which to found reproof of such practices. But of the book and its authority his remains contain no mention or estimate. Lactantius refers to Enoch as sacred literature following in this respect Tertullian. There is no other important African authority until we come to Augustine. The Western Church hardly knew the book of Enoch, or knew it only to condemn. Jerome is unhesitating in his censure of it as apocryphal, and appears to carry all Western opinion with him. To the learned like himself its character was manifested, to unlearned credulity and vulgar acceptance it was unknown. Faint shadows of some of its legends flit across the remains of Hippolytus, of Portus, and of Hilary. Priscillian of Spain was accused of arguing from uncanonical books, and sheltered himself under Jude's authority, who quotes Enoch as prophesying. But this does not prove that Priscillian had ever seen a book of Enoch, or heard of it as current when he wrote. It has been questioned, indeed, whether it ever existed in Latin, and this in spite of a Latin fragment found by Dr. James in the British Museum among a number of collected treatises or extracts forming a single volume, which bears a plausible resemblance to Enoch I-06, I-I-8, omitting, however, some passages which have probably been interpolated later into the text. Whatever opinion be held and opinions differ, concerning this anonymous Latin fragment, the broad fact of a popular Latin version having been current in Africa of some portion of the book, which, as above stated, was canonized in Abyssinia, can hardly be doubted. The language of Augustine, as referred to above, concerning its acceptance with the vulgar, seems to imply this, and the enthusiasm evinced by Tertullian for its reception would certainly suggest that, either from his hand or under his influence, it found its way into the vernacular of the African church. Of course, in regard to any such book as that or those of Enoch, two questions should be distinguished, i. is it truly ascribed to him whose name it bears? And, 2. is it of divine, i. e. inspired, authority? That a particular writer knew of the book as existing, that he had either read it or knew some of its statements at secondhand, even that he deemed it for certain purposes valuable or useful any of these may be established, even although either or both of the foregoing questions would by such writer be answered negatively. And, when this distinction is observed, there are many Christian writers in the East, in Egypt, and the Roman Africa who may be said to have more or less known and valued it, but a very few of whom either of the views embodied in those two questions could be affirmed. I doubt much whether they could be affirmed of any first-class writer except Tertullian. Even writers who, like the author of the Epistle of Barnabas, speak of it as scripture may not improbably use that term in the deuterocanonical sense. And similarly Origen whose gradual development of opinion is noticed above, uses, shortly after his recorded judgment that the churches do not esteem, Enoch, as divine, an expression which, taken alone, might seem to ascribe a, prophetic, character to it. 
He says, those who take a right view of the prophetic intent, will see that the book requires an allegorical interpretation. But, as Origen would probably apply the same rule to all books purporting to be prophetic, we need not suppose that he took it really to be the work of a prophet, in the inspired sense, which would be inconsistent with what he had said shortly before.